If you're a WordPress user, then this screen is going to be very familiar with you, but it's going to change very, very soon because WordPress is working on a major update to the platform and it's going to try to introduce a page builder instead of this what you see is what you get editor. And I want to show you that now because you can actually install a plugin which will add the page builder to your version of WordPress so you can see what it's going to look like before it's actually officially released. The update is going to be codenamed Gutenberg and if you go to the plugins add new and you search for Gutenberg, in fact I don't even need to search for it, it's already one of the top recommended plugins here, Gutenberg, you can see the problem that WordPress have is that it has 567 reviews and it's only got a two and a half out of five rating. There's 20,000 plus active installs, which isn't a huge amount when you consider how many WordPress websites there are. And the problem is that Gutenberg has loads and loads of bugs. It's very different from the way we're used to working. And I recommend you download a copy of it now so you can have a look at it. So we're gonna just install this as a plugin be aware though that when WordPress updates, it's not going to be a plugin. It's actually going to be incorporated into WordPress. So your what you see is what you get editor will disappear. There is a way to stop that from happening and I'll show you that in a moment. Let me just activate the Gutenberg plugin and I'm going to go back and I'm going to click on add new. When WordPress does update, if you want to disable the Gutenberg, you can install a plugin called disable Gutenberg and this will disable that interface from your WordPress dashboard. So you can install this one here, disable Gutenberg, install it, activate it, and then you'll have some options as to where you want Gutenberg um, disabled. So let's have a look at Gutenberg then. If I go over to that post we saw a moment ago, this was the post in the old editor, and if I just refresh that now, you'll see that the editor has completely changed. Up at the top here, we've actually lost the screen options, which allowed you to turn elements of the page on or off. So I don't know whether that is a permanent thing or whether all of the options are going to be available here and you won't have any say on what you can turn on or off. You've got the visual editor, you've also got a code editor which is the old text tab on the what you see is what you get editor. You've also got some other settings here and we've got this cog which basically turns all of the right sidebar off or toggles it off or on. We can preview it and we can update any changes that we make. Let's go in and we'll add a new post and we'll have a little look at what it looks like on adding a new post. At the top we've got a title so in here we would put the title of our post and then if we move the mouse down we can start writing the story. In my case I'm going to just paste in two paragraphs to see what happens and you can see that when we paste in these two paragraphs, what has actually happened is that two blocks have been added. A block here for the first paragraph and a block here for the second paragraph. Each block has its own editor. And you'll see this is a cut down editor from what you're used to in the old what you see is what you get editor on WordPress. But you can see these are marked as paragraph in the top right. That one's not giving it to me. This one is. Whether that's one of the many bugs in this plugin at the moment, I don't know. But there we go. We've also got three buttons down the side so we can hide the block, we can edit it as HTML, duplicate or convert to a shared block, remove block and so on. We're not going to go through all of the settings, I just want to quickly show you how this works. Over here on the right we've got this document tab which we've seen already. This is the standard functions where you can select your category and tags and publish and schedule and so on. But the block tab is the one where that changes depending on the block you're currently editing. So up on the title there isn't any options for the block but in the first paragraph you can see we can change items of that so we can make the text smaller for that particular tab we can reset it if we want to and we can custom size it with that as well there's a drop cap capital letter to show the initial capital as large there you go you can see that and we can adjust the background color text color and probably more useful here we've got some additional css that you can add so if you know how to use css you can add it directly on the edit screen if you move your mouse from the top down you'll see that as you go through on the borders of two different blocks you can see there is an insert button and that allows you to insert a block if we go right to the very end 
we're not getting that. And again, I think that's probably just a little bug because you should have an option down here to add another block. But what we can do is we can add a block by clicking on the little plus button up here, and this will tell you the blocks that are available. The very top here, I've got an inline element. So for example, if I wanted to put an inline image, you can insert that. The problem is when I've added one like that or try to add one, it doesn't actually give me any options for aligning the image. There's the image there. And if I try to align it, the whole paragraph is aligned. So these inline images are at the moment not particularly useful. So let's try and delete that. And again, I've tried to delete these in the past and it doesn't seem to want to delete them. So let's try the, the back button and that's going to delete it. Okay, so let's have a look at some of the other blocks that you can add. You can add another paragraph. You can add an image as a separate block. So let's do that. And you can see that that is actually a little bit more useful because now if I resize it, I can show, I can put the alignment as I want it. And I'm going to actually attempt to drag this block. Let's have a look. And we, sh and we should be able to do that by clicking on the little arrows here to move it up or down. I want to move it up one. Let's move it up one. And because I've set the alignment to left, text to flow, text flows around on the right hand side, or I could do it the other way around. So when you insert an image as a separate block, it actually works out a little bit better. Let's preview that. And it says preview generating preview, but it seems actually not to be working. Let me go in and see if I publish it first, and then we'll try and preview it and see whether that works. But again, I think that's probably just a little bug there. Let's view the post. And you see that indeed the image does wrap around or the text does wrap around the image. So that's quite good. Let's go back and we'll have a look at see what other blocks you can add. You can add a heading block. You can add a gallery, which is a, a number of images that you've got together. Or you can add a list. Let's add a list. And you can see we've now got an unordered list. In other words, a bullet point list. You can convert that into a numbered list using the what you see is what you get editor at the top. And you've got a few other options there if you want to transform it into paragraph or quotes. Let's have a look at some more options, more blocks that we can add. You can add quotes, you can add audio, cover image and file, common blocks. These are probably the ones you're going to use the most. In formatting, we've actually got a nice addition, which is to add a table. So that will add a table block over here. You can see a lot of people have problems formatting tables or adding tables of information. That block is really going to help out there. It's under the formatting. We've also got the pre-formatted, which is in the old WordPress as well, and that's useful for programmers who want to display programming code without any problem. Layout elements, we've got buttons, columns. That's an experimental thing, so you can have two columns of text on your screen. We've got page breaks, separators, the more tag. One nice thing you can do is you can add widgets, uh, certain widgets, not all widgets. For example, I could add the latest post widget into the body of a post just by clicking on that. So that those are the blocks that you can add. We've also got all these down here to embed. The nice thing, I suppose, about the editor over here is that these are context sensitive. So whatever you're editing, the buttons that appear at the top are going to be relevant to that particular section. So if I go up into the table section, you can see I've got lots of table options to add rows, delete rows. If it's just a text block, we've got the text editors. So really we don't need such a comprehensive menu as we found in the older What You See Is What You Get editor because this will be sufficient for the block. It will always update to give you the, the data that you need on the blocks. Over on the block section here, you can see I've selected the table block. We've got some table settings. Again, that advanced CSS is there for all of them. And you can see that block it changes when I move down to the list block down here. So that's what Gutenberg is going to be like. There are some problems, as you've seen, and there are a lot of bad reviews, people who don't like it. It will be incorporated into WordPress 
Remember that plugin I showed you earlier at the start of this video that can disable Gutenberg. Be prepared to use that because Gutenberg may actually even break your site when it updates. Hopefully it won't because WordPress is supposed to be backwardly compatible, but there are a lot of worried people out there thinking that this new update, this new system, if you like, that WordPress is developing is going to break older and existing sites. My advice, download the plugin, have a play around with it, install it on your site, activate it, see whether your site breaks or not. If it does, remove the plugin and just wait for a later version. If it doesn't, then you can have a play around with it, see how it works and start getting used to it because like it or not, this is going to be integrated into WordPress. And if you don't have the plugin to switch it off, then you're gonna be stuck with it. And who knows in the future, maybe WordPress will stop you from disabling it and stop you going back to the old, what you see is what you get editor. So what are your thoughts on this? Is it good? Is it bad? I know it's not as comprehensive as some of the other page builders out there. So maybe that is a cause for concern as well. Let me know.